what's up guys welcome to my channel if you are new yet my name is divine i'm a musical five minominak drummer and a keyboardist i have been for many many years i started making these videos as a space for music lovers like myself to check out our favorite artists and break down some of our findings that make them so so fantastic make sure you follow us on instagram at the perseverance reaction in order to recommend the favorite singers for us to react to What's up YouTube? Hope you guys are feeling good. Today guys, we're back again with a new video guys. I'm here with my pastor guys, a special friend, the pastor, a counselor guys. This is an amazing man of God. Please introduce yourself. My name is Pastor Silas and I'm here with the Perseverance. Yes. We brought this video, Why is the Quran a Miracle? It came about, so we watched it. It was amazing seeing the miracles about Quran. So I brought my pastor here to watch the same video as me. And make some clarity to clarify some certain things. You know how it is, guys. Let's give this video a try. In Islam, faith is not blind, it is based off knowledge and rationality. When Muslims are asked why they believe Islam is the truth, they respond by saying the Qur'an is the proof. But when they are asked to explain how, it can be difficult to give a satisfying answer because there is just so much that can be said. So, how is the Qur'an a miracle? Allah revealed a verse in the Qur'an affirming that he would protect his revelation from ever being corrupted 1400 years ago. If you think about it, this is a huge claim to make yet we find the Qur'an remains completely unchanged after all these years. No matter where you are in the world, the Qur'an is one and no two Muslims disagree. In another verse, Allah says that he has made the Qur'an easy to learn and asks if there will be anyone that will learn it. Every single generation since the Qur'an was revealed has had memorizers, making it the only book to have passed down in human memory. Considering most Muslims don't understand the language, the speed at which they can learn the Qur'an is almost unbelievable. To give you an idea, imagine memorizing a page of Chinese in a matter of half an hour. Today, there are more than 100 million memorizers of all its 600 pages, word for word, letter for letter. You might be asking, why is the Qur'an in Arabic if most Muslims aren't Arabs? Well, Allah tells us why in many verses. In one, he says to remove any crookedness or confusion, and in another, so that it may be perfectly clear. We now know that Arabic is one of the most eloquent languages that delivers incredible depth and precision with the least amount of words. In Arabic, one single word can translate into a full descriptive sentence. If the Qur'an was in English, it would have to be thousands of pages thicker, if not more, just to carry a close enough meaning. The effect that the Qur'an has on those who listen to it being recited can easily be seen from the thousands of reaction videos on YouTube. It literally brings people to tears, despite them not understanding the language. Guess what? Allah explicitly told us that people would react like this 1,400 years ago. In the fourth chapter, Allah presents an open challenge. He says, Do they not reflect upon the Qur'an? If it had been from anyone other than Allah, they would have found in it much error and contradiction. Fourteen centuries of critics have passed, and not a single error or contradiction can be found, despite great advancements in knowledge. Allah has placed many scientific subtleties in the Qur'an for us to reflect on. For example, the Big Bang that describes the creation of the universe starting from a single point, or the expansion of the universe that was discovered in the last 50 years. To give you an idea of how much of a breakthrough this was, Stephen Hawking said that this was one of the great intellectual revolutions of the 20th century. This was explicitly mentioned in the Quran 14 centuries ago. More signs include every living thing being made of water, and mountains as pegs 
standing firm and stabilizing the earth from shaking. Amazingly, Allah mentions two seas that meet but don't mix, one fresh and sweet, the other salty and bitter, and between them being a barrier, all of which science has confirmed. Allah states how the human is formed, which we have found is in the correct chronological order. Particularly, Allah describes the embryo in shockingly accurate detail. The famous Professor Keith Moore admitted this information could not have been known by man 1400 years ago. Of the historical signs in the Quran include the preservation of the Pharaoh of Egypt. Both the Bible and the Quran mention that he drowned after Moses peace be upon him parted the sea. But the Quran also makes a very unique statement not found in the Bible. Allah says that he will preserve his body and save it as a sign for future generations. The Quran describes the location where the Persians defeated the Romans as the lowest land. Not only have historians derived that the battle took place near the Dead Sea, scientists have confirmed that this location is in fact the lowest point of land on earth 417 meters below sea level. The Quran is full of stories of previous prophets. Not many people know that Moses peace be upon him is the most frequently mentioned name. The Quran also narrates many stories about Jesus Christ peace be upon him. Mary, the mother of Jesus, is regarded as one of the best women to walk the face of the earth and has a whole chapter to herself. Why these story signs? because there is no way they were plagiarized. In that time, there was not a single library or translation of the Bible available. There are also many linguistic miracles in the Quran. Modern research shows that the Quran follows a remarkable structure called ring composition. Let's take chapter two of the Quran as an example. This chapter can be split into nine groups based on the theme of the group. The first group mirrors the last group, the second group mirrors the second to last group, and so on. What's more is that there are sub-rings inside each group, in other words, rings inside of rings. If we look at group 8, we find yet another ring inside of that ring. There are also countless other occurrences in the Quran, such as the word day, in its singular being mentioned 365 times and the word month 12 times. The word life is mentioned the same number of times as death, angels the same number as devils, good deeds the same as bad deeds and belief the same as disbelief. These are only just a few examples. Additionally, the Quran describes death, the day of judgment, heaven and hell in such vivid detail. In fact, you can hardly find a page in the Quran that doesn't mention the Day of Judgment. All of that whilst presenting a complete way of life for us to follow. In Islam, anything that causes harm is not allowed, and everything that is beneficial and good is encouraged. Why is there harm? Because life is a test. Allah says in the Quran, He who created death and life to test which of you are best indeed. Islam develops your character, it teaches you how to carry yourself and how to be in control. Islam protects and empowers women, it eliminates racism, terrorism and all oppression. A good Muslim is one who people feel safe around from their actions and words, one who people trust and one who people look up to. A huge part of understanding why the Quran is a miracle is understanding how it was revealed. The Quran came down over 23 years in spoken form. It was not written down. Once verses came down, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, recited them and his companions memorized them. Unlike any other book, the Quran did not go through an editing process. Once the verse was spoken, I found this very it was amazing. Done. That was mm, yeah. the final version. The verses were not revealed in order, starting from chapter 1, verse 1, 2, 3, and so on. The chapters and verses were revealed out of sequence. Furthermore, 
they could not be planned ahead of time. They were revealed as a result of life experiences that were out of the Prophet's control, such as enemies challenging him or the believers asking him life questions. To summarize, the Quran has been perfectly preserved and unchanged for 14 centuries whilst excelling linguistically, scientifically, historically and mathematically. It has a profound impact on those who listen to it and is memorized and recited by hundreds of millions of people worldwide. It brings forth a complete way of life and fills the hearts with peace and purpose. Humanity is yet to rise to its challenges, as Allah promised, and it's safe to say that no matter what angle you look at the Qur'an, it shows no weakness. Allah says, if you are in doubt, then produce even a chapter like it. Then he says, call upon your witnesses. In other words, go ahead, work in a team, gather all of humanity and try your best. He then seals the challenge by saying, if you do not, and you will never be able to. 1400 years have passed and no book or text or speech in any language comes close to competing with the quality, eloquence and perfection of the Quran. A lot of people think if they follow Islam, they're going to deprive themselves of things they would have otherwise enjoyed. Actually, the opposite is true. Allah tells us that if we live life by his book, burdens are lifted and life becomes so much better and easier. The freedom, peace and harmony found in the heart of a true Muslim cannot be described until it is experienced. Allah has given us countless signs. Will we continue turning our backs? So, I, I, find, I find them very, very interesting personality too. But um, in light of uh, what, what we believe as, as Christians, yeah. in light of um, what the word speaks, see, um, like I, I've, I've said and I will keep saying it, the Bible is not a um, historical book. Yeah. It's not even a scientific book. It's not a mathematical book. It's a spiritual book. And it, it talks about a person. It doesn't talk about things. Yeah. It talks about a person. And uh, if you, the Colossians we read, the Colossians 1 talked about the fact, let's, let's read the Colossians 1 again one more time. Okay. Who also declared unto us your love in the Spirit? For this cause also, for this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power, unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father which had made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who had delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature, for by him, complete it, for were all things created. created that are where in heaven in heaven and that are in earth uh -huh. visible uh -huh. and invisible uh -huh. whether they be thrones uh -huh. or dominions or principalities or powers all things were created by him and, and for, for him. him the bible reveals one person jesus genesis 3 i think that will even help us more genesis 3 the verse 15 says what and, and I'll, I'll put, put enmity, enmity go on, between go on. thee and the woman, mm -hmm. and between thy seed and her seed. Mm -hmm. It shall bruise their head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. His heel. Mm, that's Genesis. That's that's in Genesis, right? It's Genesis chapter three, verse fifteen. Okay. Now let's go to thirty-one. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. 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 Now, God said, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman, 
and between the woman, that, between the, thy seed and her seed. Her seed here talks about Jesus. Hmm. His, the, the devil's seed here talks about the devil and his cohorts. Now, it's not the physical serpent. It's not talking about the physical serpent. It's talking about the devil. And see, it was, we just read now in, in, in um, Matthew where he called them old generation of what? Vipers. Hmm. So, I'm, the reason why I'm, I'm doing this, I'm, I'm, I'm being very intentional so that we see that the Bible is not, I just want us to get it clear. There is no need for a comparison. There's no need to compare both books. Because the Bible, first of all, is not even a historical book. Although you can find history in the book. But it's not a book of history. Although you find several um, prophecies, several proclamations. Um, I don't want to use predictions because it may sound somehow, but you see some predictions of things that are going to happen. And they have happened. In fact, God himself spoke in Genesis 1, and we saw the confirmation word, look, years later. Yeah. Many years later. So it's not a thing of argument. It's not a thing to, to compare. Yeah, in fact, today we have a lot of books that have been written by scientists and these guys, have, it's been proven that yes, these things are true. But there's a difference between when you call something true and when you call something truth. Something being true, truth is a person. That's Jesus. Truth is a person. That's Jesus. He said, I am the way, the truth, Jesus. and the life. He calls himself that. That's because he is that person. So something can be true, but yet it cannot be truth. It takes Jesus. It takes Jesus to some, for something to be truth. If the thing must be truth, then it is by Jesus. If it's not Jesus, then it's not truth. So if you are looking for, in fact, if you go to Proverbs, you talk about Proverbs, the book of Proverbs tells you about how to deal with fellow men, how to be quiet when you are in an argument. It tells you a lot of things. But the, the book is not about human history. It's about a person, about a person who God sent to liberate mankind, to reconcile mankind to himself. That's just that's what the Bible is. So they, this, these are these are these are um, facts. They have their they have their points. They have their points of argument. They have um, certain um, related happenings, which may which for for as far as we care, it may be coincidental or not. But it's just okay. These predictions happens, and we have people in our world today who they just sit there and say, okay, this person is going to do it, and it happens like that. Yeah. It doesn't mean that they tend like yes. prophecy. Yes. So we have people that even predict. How about the people that predict the weather? They predict the weather. They just tell you that okay, today is going to be sunny. There are people that they are not those people, they are not even religious. They don't have anything connected to any kind of God that they worship, but they just predict. Right. But I'm telling you that the, the this Bible, our Bible is not a Bible, it's not a book of sense. It's not a book that appeals to sense. It's a book. From the spirit, I told, I've told you before. That second Peter spoke about the fact that yeah. the Bible was inspired by the Holy Spirit, putting certain men down and then giving them instructions so on what to write. That's true. So these are the points that I myself I, I found them very you know very wild. Like I was wild about it, but beyond that, I don't I don't I can't I can't put it and say okay, um, that's the most. The, the, that's to their that's to the best of how they think about the book. Because I mean everyone, when it comes to their own affair, everyone takes a point of bias, that bias point. Everyone has that view. And a lot of things, you know, these are wonders, you know, and, and we have scientists that actually they don't they are not even um, Christians, but they predict some of it. In fact, even in the Bible, when how did Herod know that Jesus was going to be born in Nazareth? When the wise men came to Jesus and they said, we've seen his star in the, the east where we are coming from, seen his star, and then we have come to worship him. Do you know that Herod did not know that Jesus was born in, in his city? Hmm. He called his astrologers. He called his... Um, yeah, yeah. He called them. He said, these are not believers. These are yeah. not Christians. He called them. It was from the books that have been written. He told them to bring the scrolls, and then he began to read, and then he, they went to read the prophecies of Isaiah, 
the prophecies of the old prophets. That's how he got to find out that Jesus was born in that city. That's why he now said they should kill all the male children, all the firstborns in that city. How did he know it was? Because he read the books too. So if I was going to bring an argument, I, there are millions of prophecies here, even today that is manifesting in our world today. All the signs of the end time, system failing, things happening. They are all in here. They are all here. But the difference is that this, this particular book is not a mental book. It's not a book that you use senses to, you know, understand. It takes a spirit to understand. So that's why. So that's, that's just the best of. It's very clear. Yeah. <laughs> I get you. I understand. And I love the points of view. I love how you explain it. Especially the points you gave when Jesus was born. Then... He called astrologists, he called like different people to come alive. To come, bring How? your... How? Yes. That's true, that's true. So... That's true. <laughs> guys, comment down below your thoughts, guys. Comment down below, like this video, share to as many as you can, guys. You know how do we to see you guys on next video. Thanks, thank you very much. Thank you. I just bought a bag, like an old lady. I'm back, wood smoking, I don't own papers, pass that 808. That don't, don't shake her. Oh, bitch, you know I'm grinding like a pro skater. Baby, mama bugging, I'm so quick to hit ignore. Buku bitch, in my bed. I got scales all